Thanks, you may be seated. That was awesome, worship team. Thank you. So, my name is Sal. I'm on staff here. And uh, today is a special day. If you're visiting with us, we're uh, thrilled that you're here. And uh, one of the things we do at the Waymark Church is celebrate individuality. We celebrate that everybody's different and God wants to use us all differently. We want to do everything we can to pour in to the youth of this community and surrounding communities, your children, grandchildren, uh, nieces and nephews. And we have been working for the last half a year to prepare sending a group of 25 to Brackney, Pennsylvania on what is called a James Project Missions Trip. The James Project Missions Trip is located at the Arrowhead Bible Camp. And this particular endeavor is um, a camp that hosts a camp for developmentally disabled. So they will have those individuals who are developmentally disabled who have been attending. It's hard for these people to see over there, so we'll move this. Um, some of those folks have been attending camp for 45 years, 15 years, 20 years. Our kids had the opportunity to go up to the camp and be staff support. So they have counselors there at the camp, but our group of young people could go up and do all kinds of dis different projects interacting with the kids. We want to give you a quick snapshot of some of what took place, and we're going to share with you through the young people how God changed their hearts and how God impacted their lives. So take a moment, if you wouldn't, and watch this video with us. Welcome to the James Project.
forget about me. I love you. <clears throat> the concept, forget about me, I love you, family. Picture the arguments in your home. Mom, they won't take the last bowl of ice cream. I tried to give it to them and they wouldn't take it. What happens when we put other people first? I'd like to invite all of our James Project leaders and students up at this time, if you would come. And you're going to hear personally from them some of the ways that God impacted their life. When these young people come up here, I can do a good job of painting them as uh, these beautiful, perfect kids who are sold out, connected to God. But the truth is, <laughs> they're young people on a journey. And the tr opportunity that they had this week aids them in seeing which way they should go on this journey we call life. What we're going to do is we're going to give uh, the leaders over here a, a mic. There's a white mic on the left. Go ahead and take that down there. Yellow mic. And then um, I'd like to use a mic for the students as well. Um, here they are. Purple mic for the students. So we can uh, start over here with Brianna. But this week was an interesting week. 25 people went. 13 stayed. Not because it was so hard that they chose to leave, but apparently during the course of the week, a bug, a very challenging bug that caused um, stuff from every part of the body, went through the camp. The leaders, the students, and the um, count campers as well. So our kids started getting sick throughout the week. Some of our leaders were getting sick as well. But I want them to share with you, even in spite of everything that happened, what God did in their life. I'm actually uh, open it up to the leaders first. If you want to set anything up, Ross, you can do that. And then uh, if not, we'll take it from there. We'll let Brianna start. With Jaden and Michaela, I was able to work with them in my group. We did the lessons. We did fun skits every um, couple days. Um, and I got sick, so I had to go home early. But luckily, Ross um, stepped in and helped with the lessons. And Jaden and Michaela, I think they were hesitant at first when I told them we were doing skits. And they really opened up, and Michaela became the detective. And Jaden helped make um, sheep. We made, uh, we did the shepherd and the lost sheep. So we made 70 sheep, so all the campers were able to bring one home. So Jaden really helped with that, and Michaela stepped out and helped. And then Maddie, I saw, um, she's not here today, but she really stepped out. She was very shy going into it. She's one of our younger um, group that came. And she really stepped out and was able to work with the different campers. And um, so I really saw her open up. Yeah, and... Uh just kind of as the leader of the group, like you, you'll hear more stories as we go on, but uh, I had the privilege of, of working with Brianna, who uh, got, like, like she had said, had gotten sick halfway through the week. And uh, I guess before that, though, um, just amazing Brianna working with you this week. She is re really kind of a true leader. Or, uh, coordinator uh, where she had everything set and ready for all of our lessons all of the the projects and crafts that we were doing 
And uh, and then even though she got sick and had to go home part of the way through the week, she just miraculously showed up just when we needed her. Um, thank you, Dale and Rose, for bringing her out. But uh, um, unbeknownst to to me, God had some other plans for me that night where I wasn't there. But uh, Brianna was was there and and helped the leaders that were still at the camp to to keep things running. Go ahead, Melissa. Say your name. I'm Melissa, and last year I we didn't really get to connect with the campers as much, but this year we were able to like really spend time with them, connect with them, and it was really fun because you got to learn that they just wanted to have friends, you know, hang out with people, and it was just, they always made you smile, and it was just a really fun experience with all of them. Were you excited about going? I was dreading going. I didn't want to go at all, but I'm really happy I did, and I kind of wanted, I had to go home because I got sick. But I wish I stayed the whole week. I wish I could have. And I went back the last day just to help out and say bye to all the campers. Um, Alyssa was in my group. We were on the bathroom crew, which it was an awesome week to have to clean bathrooms. Um, <laughs> and so while she wasn't there the whole week, um, it was still amazing just to see how hard, um, how hard she worked and just no complaining. You know, it didn't matter if uh, a camper ran in the bathroom while they were cleaning and threw up. Um, you know, they, they went back in, got it clean, and, um, you know, there was, there was no bickering, you know, no fighting about who had to clean what up. And it was really amazing to see just how hard these kids worked. I'm Amber. Uh, I also went home sick, but I came back Thursday. Um, we had a lot of fun. Um, hanging out with the campers and just doing things with the campers and enjoying our time there. So Amber was on my team in the kitchen, mine and, and my wife's. Um, Amber was like the uh, the force to be reckoned with in the back. She was the one who kind of gave us all the energy we could possibly need and a good laugh when we were all really exhausted. So it was a pleasure to have her on our team. Um, hi, I'm Liger. I was one of the few who didn't get sick. Um, I was on the lessons crew with Brianna, Nick, uh, Michaela, and Jaden. Um, I was the sheep that you saw in the video dancing. Um, I learned a lot this week that these campers are still people, that they, d they act like us even though some parts of them cannot. They, they are still human, they are still people, and they want friends, they want to be loved, they want to be treated like actual people. And I had a lot of fun this past week. Yeah, and just as a shout out to Liger, like the day before, he was planning on being on the kitchen crew for the week, and uh, something changed, and I had to switch him. And as you saw with the dancing sheep in the video, he, he wasn't planning on being part of our lesson crew, he wasn't planning on doing anything with drama or having to be in front of people, but he owned it, and he jumped in with a whole heart, and it was amazing working with him for the week. Hello, uh, my name is Brad. Um, I didn't get sick at all, which was quite great. I was like one of the, like, the only four boys that didn't get sick at all, I think. Or three. Or five. I really don't remember. Um, what's it called? I was on lessons crew and bathroom crew, so I was on double duty. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> he was on what duty? Double duty. Um, what's it called? Uh, I was thinking, I was by the lake during our free time. I was just thinking about... God works in mysterious ways, and like, even though they're mentally disabled, like, they can still bring joy. They can still like fix you, and like, everybody's kind of like a tool, and kind of like they fix. I don't know. They fix each other. They grow each other. Getting closer to God. It's quite an amazing experience. When I was singing during the towel show and during like chapel time, it was quite amazing them singing back and so happy and like going all around even though sometimes they can't do it or their faces is like lit up with joy. It's just a great feeling uh, showing Jesus and just making them have a good time. Okay, uh, I'm gonna quick jump in here. So uh, being on uh, the music crew leader uh, with Jamie, Brad was on our crew and um, Going into the project, uh, one of our last meetings, Brad made a comment. Uh, I signed up for this gig to play my trumpet. I'm really not into the whole singing and doing motions thing. So I kind of started off the week with 
kind of like a chip on my shoulder wondering what kind of attitude or slack am I going to get from him not wanting to do uh, what he had to do. And uh, it turned out Brad proved me wrong and taught me a few lessons along the way. Brad totally brought this over-the-top energy level that I know I couldn't have brought. Um, with everybody pretty much going down at, towards the end of the week, we wound up with Brad and Ross doing the music and uh, songs, emotions, and everything. And just the, the energy level made up for the lack of people that we lost due to the sickness. So... Hi, I'm Mia. Um, I also didn't get sick somehow. I don't know how. I think I was probably one of the only girls that didn't get sick. But yeah, um, I really admired the leadership in this week, both our leaders and the leaders at the camp and the counselors and everything that they sacrificed to be there and to help make that place run and do what it's supposed to do and to help so many people and give them a good week. Mia Hi. was our trooper in the kitchen. She was like one of the lone survivors from our devastated force and she took over the pot sink and did all of it herself she worked so hard this weekend we were so thankful for her for her to be there hi i'm sarah and um i got sick on thursday and i went home and uh, what i learned this week was to um be patient with people and like um She really stepped into and helped with our making a, all the sheep. Um, she was really good at that. Uh, we had a really good, almost like a each step, we each station to make our sheep. So she was really good at that and doing the music as well. Um, I had uh, in the music we had Sarah and Haley and Katarina, um, and they were great because they brought life to all the music and they did all the movements. And sometimes it's so not cool for teenagers to do sing and do movements, but. Um, they didn't care. Um, they just put their whole hearts and soul into it. Um, and uh, Haley really helped out um, with trying to um, do one of the skits. She really owned one of them and just kind of took it on and was uh, telling, uh, like, helping, encouraging everyone else to just be kind of funny and crazy and still um, give the message. And she was really good at that. And uh, Katerina. Um, really helped out is she she has such a heart for the campers and even though she got sick um she was one of the first ones to get sick she got sick and then came back and after she came back from brushing her teeth she had a uh, cards in her hand for uno and i'm like what are you doing you need to go back to bed and she's like no chris who was one of the campers needs someone to play uno with them she's like i need to pick two more people and go play uno um, with them so she didn't care that she had just been pretty ill she was more concerned about the camper having fun because it was early in the morning and some of the campers were up pretty early so you know she really wanted to help out um, make sure that chris um, had a good time before breakfast yeah, the other two Uno players got sick too, <laughs> but no. <laughs> Hi, I'm Haley. Um, I got sick and went home on Wednesday, but the rest of the week was really life-changing. And, like, just getting to know all the campers and just seeing, like, and understanding that, like, they're all equal. Like, we're the same as them. Like, there's no reason they should be treated in any differently. Because even though they may have a mental disability, they're still a human. They're still a person. And, like, another thing, just being grateful for what you have. Because we take what we have for granted, but then you see them, and they don't have nearly as much as we do. And they're still so grateful for it. And, yeah. All right. Um, hi, I'm Amelia. Uh, I didn't get sick, and um, I cleaned bathrooms, which was quite fun when everybody had the stomach bug. But um, yeah, it took a lot of patience, and like because the other two girls that were cleaning the bathroom with me, they got sick, and so uh, the one day I was doing everything mostly on myself. And so that was pretty, like, stressful for me because a lot of people were going into the bathroom and getting sick in the middle of cleaning it. And so 
I had to be really patient. And but Jaden and Michaela, they helped me uh, the last couple of days, which was nice. And just like interacting with the campers, that was like so much fun. Some of them were hilarious. Like one, he had like a little SpongeBob stuffed animal, and he always had you do CPR on it because it was always like not very good in his pocket. But yeah. Um, like Amelia said, she was cleaning the bathrooms, and she had cleaned bathrooms with me last year when we went, and so she had she thought she knew what she was getting into this year when she signed up to do bathrooms again. Um, little did she know it was way above and beyond what we had to deal with last year, and so um, like all of us, we all kind of had that stress when when people started getting sick. And uh, but you you would not have known it to look at Amelia to talk to her. She was happy and smiling and laughing, and um, it was really cool to see how her attitude stayed positive even when all, all everything else was uh, going crazy. So thank you, Amelia. Any shout outs? Oh yes, shout out to Germex and Lysol and Clorox um, <laughs> for keeping us nice and uh, healthy. So, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Katerina. Um, I didn't really want to go this year. My mom kind of made me. So, um, I went in with a really negative attitude, and going in, I was like in a really bad place at the time. Um, I had very little faith going in. I was just really depressed, like, that whole week. And going in, I was like, I don't really want to do this. But, um, the first time we sang, um, hearing the campers sing back to us was absolutely incredible. Like, the fact that they were so happy and joyful while singing and they all wanted to volunteer to come up and sing with us was absolutely incredible. Um, I got sick Monday morning and Tuesday night. So, so um, I was kind of like not feeling well but I tried my hardest and um, I just learned that even though um, we were so different um, music can bring everyone together yeah and just a shout out too for Katarina she was the first one in our group to go down yeah. um, but it it was because like she, from the stepping out of the car day one she, she was there connecting with campers and uh, um, like it was just it was just amazing it was sad that she got sick, but but she was she was the one that was loving on them no matter what, and uh, and just really connected. And so so Katerina, thank you for leading that for the week. And uh, some of the others of us, you know, depending on where we were working, it took a little bit longer for us to really start to get to know the campers and interact. But um, Katerina was was a really good example of just that. Um, forget about me and just loving on the campers from from the very first day. So thanks, Katerina. Hi, I'm Michaela. Uh, I did get sick, but I did not go home. I was very determined on staying and getting better and like helping everybody else. But to go along with what Bree said, when she said we were doing skits, I got <laughs> very nervous because I'm not a very like acting person, and I was kind of one of like the main roles in the skits. But it definitely showed me to step out of my comfort zone and just seeing everybody and how happy they were to see the skits. It just made me feel so much better about it. Hi, I'm Jaden. Um, this past week has been amazing. Um, just knowing that from if I sat with them and had a conversation with them or complimented them, I could have been making their day. And it was just amazing interacting with the campers and seeing them sing back was just amazing and doing the motions. Like I never thought that they would do that, but they did. Yeah, and again, to jump in, um, for both Jaden and Michaela, Jaden was uh, one of the other ones that were sick almost from the get-go. And, um, and both of them stayed and both of them recovered. Um, thankfully, they weren't as bad as some of the other ones who were up all night puking. But, uh, but, but thankfully, they were able to because like Amelia had said, by the end of the week, they both jumped in our, on the bathroom crew and, uh, and just were real shot in the arm there because we, we definitely needed help in that, in that area. I want to say too, even though so many of them did get sick, like their spirit was never broken. It was just so awesome to see like these kids, they were sick, but they still wanted to, to do the work and 
also wanted to do the purpose of serving um, while they were there. So even at their sickest, they were, their hearts were still good. There was no complaining. Even though they were, they were sick, there was no complaining. Um, they were just upset that they couldn't help. So I just think that was awesome that they still, in the midst of feeling poorly, still just wanted to help. So not only that, but I especially the girls. Um, so pretty much every day, I remember Lindsay, uh, who couldn't be here today, saying that even the ones who weren't sick were woken up at like 2, 3 in the morning to someone being sick in the room. So the girls literally didn't sleep all week long. I'm pretty sure Jamie was, went like 36 hours without sleep at one point. So, and they still stuck it out. They still went hard. So they were really impressive. Hi, I'm Kendra. Um, this week was really hard, but it was also really good because we got to experience a lot of new things. Um, it was a great experience, like when the campers would just light up when you talk to them and seeing how happy they get, it just makes you happy and you just want to do more and make more people happy. And yeah. Um, Kendra started off in the bathroom and uh, she ended up getting moved over to the kitchen crew just because we needed to swap people around. But it was amazing. Um, I know she didn't really want to be there when we first got there. But um, to see her attitude kind of change throughout the week. And <laughs> um, she really uh, put in the work and really helped out. And we, I don't think we could have done it nearly as well without her. So thank you, Kendra. Yeah, and then just to jump in on that too to explain. Um, Kendra, Kendra was one of the ones that it wasn't that she wasn't excited about the trip, but like last minute, like that morning, I had to go up to Kendra and be like, hey, Kendra, I know you were planning on working in the kitchen, but I need help in the bathroom. And so, so she was struggling a little bit first thing because she had a switch that was not um, exactly what she wanted to do for the week. Um, but then it was amazing because um, she went from like having to do the bathrooms to doing a great job in the bathrooms to once we started losing people in other positions, she was everywhere. And, um, and so she went from the first day or two, like we had to kind of fight her to even get her in the photos because she doesn't like to be center of attention to like she was going to the kitchen and volunteering to help in the dish or help clear tables or, or wherever she was needed, she was there. Um, so it was amazing to see how that changed over the week. Uh, I'm Jake. I was one of the few people that did not get sick, and I just have to say, uh, this week was, it was rough, but it was definitely worth it in the end. I remember we were uh, first driving in, and I was like, is it Friday yet? Because I was forced to go on the trip, and I was like, I don't want to go. But, like, towards the whole week, I was like, oh, this is actually, like, I didn't want to leave when Friday actually came. I was like, can I stay? Is there more to do? And um, you never really appreciate how much you have until you realize what you do have and how much some people don't have. Because a lot of the campers there, they didn't have much family members. They just had like caretakers and people to like kind of be there for them only sometimes. And m most of us, or some of us, have family that are there for us even when you're mad at them or you don't like them they're still family and they're always there for you and it was just a good week overall even though a lot of our people got sick yeah. so Jake uh, had an interesting week for sure so um, you know I said uh, right in the beginning when, when Jake got there he even said himself he didn't want to be there I said he had a chip on his shoulder right in the first day within probably the second day he was already stepping out of that and was like the the biggest force we had um he was later in the week he was taking care of all of our sick people he was running breakfast out to them checking on them every hour uh he was guarding all of our girls at night like walking around following the groups making sure they were safe he was incredible this whole week and then not only once but twice did jake have a medical emergency and have to be taken to either a clinic or the emergency room and insisted that he went back to the camp rather than go home when he had two opportunities to go home. He was awesome this week. John went up. Go ahead, John. 
Um, so uh, what was it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Um, I had been doing interviews with all the kids uh, that left, um, and uh, so I, I we finished that. I was going to put my stuff away before we started preparing dinner, and uh, I got into the and I. I thought Jake was taking a nap on the lower bunk, and uh, I kind of looked at him, and it, it seemed like he was having a nightmare because um, he was breathing really hard. And uh, so I kind of said his name to try and wake him up, and he didn't. He didn't wake up. Um, so I started to shake him, and it took quite a bit of shaking to get him wake. Oh, to get him to wake up, and um, when he finally did, he, I could tell he was scared. Um, he said he couldn't breathe. So I, you know, I immediately went into panic mode. Um, yeah, I ran downstairs. I s grabbed the first two people I saw and told them to get upstairs. And then I ran and got the camp nurses, and uh, they grabbed their equipment. We ran upstairs, and um, they tested his, his oxygen levels in his blood, his blood pressure. They all seemed to be fine, but we still had to call the EMTs um, just because he was struggling to breathe. Um, and then... We had the experience of carrying Jake down the stairs um, and then wheelchair him across the, the uh, uh, game room and then golf carting him to the edge of the camp so that the uh, ambulance could arrive without scaring all the campers. Um, and then him and Ross left and we didn't know what was going on. Um, so that was, that was a pretty scary experience for me and for all of our group really because we all know Jake so well and we, you know, we all love him. And uh, that, was, that was probably the toughest time for me for the week, um, just because you have that boost of adrenaline and then the crash as you know the ambulance pulls away and it's like, okay, what do we do now? Um, and so Mike Harding and uh, got together with a bunch of the kids and did the only thing we could do and prayed. Um, and it, it was amazing because later that night Jake came back, and uh, it was the, he he was doing better than Ross and I were doing at that point. <laughs> um, so it was it was quite the experience. But man, I cannot say enough about Jake and Ross and Ross's leadership, and just the whole group coming together to pray for Jake. And I mean, it was amazing um, to show of that. Forget about me. I love you. Um, so, John, I was speaking to John blow by blow through the situation, and as the ambulance was in the lot leaving, he was not even able to communicate. It was so emotional. Jake has a cardiac condition called supraventricular tachycardia, so his heart will go into a 100 plus 200, 150, whatever it is, a beat, and literally um, is very disabling. So through that whole process, it's a very emotional uh, period of time because for him, he has no control over it. And for our leaders, so all of us are at different places, calling his mom, his mom's traveling up. So even in the midst of that, um, it was exciting to see how they did pull together and how God still used that. And then at the emergency room, was like, no, I want to go back to the camp. I want to go back to the camp. And here's the kid. And I don't know what happens in your cars, and I don't know what happened in their car, but I can imagine Friday morning, just shut up, get in the car, you're going. <laughs> he was the kid who didn't want to go, and uh, God just broke his heart. Yeah, and if, if I can just give a, a little bit of a shout-out now um, to, to my leaders, and if, if I start crying, I probably am going to. Um, uh, that, that day, Thursday, um, as everything was happening with the ambulance and as I, as I ended up leaving the camp, um, it was just a moment where there was just so many things that God put together just right. I had mentioned before about Brianna had come back, right? She had gotten sick and had to go home, but she came back that day. Um, and it was amazing because that was the day that Sarah had gotten sick as well. And, um, and just, uh, uh, Pastor, could you, can I do have a couple minutes? Is that okay? All right. So, um, Sarah, all the way till the end, like she was at the computer doing music slides for us and then all of a sudden she just wasn't there. And it was like, wait a minute, what happened to Sarah? Like she was serving all the way up as long as she could. But uh, well, it was cool because um, Dale and Rose had brought Brianna up and so they were able to, to bring Sarah back again um, because before that had happened, I thought that I was gonna have to send Mike back 
uh, with Sarah to, to, to take her home to make sure that she was okay. Sarah's, and, Sarah's sugar topped out at 600? Yeah. She has juvenile diabetes. Yeah, so, so that's, that's what was going on with Sarah, but it was amazing because all of a sudden Dale and Rose showed up and then little did I know, like I had already talked through it with Mike and Mike was, was one of my leaders that it was like talking through, it was like, Mike, at this point, the best thing is gonna be for you to go back and um, it, it was like both, both of us, but, but Mike, it was almost to the, the point of crying because he didn't want to go. And, um, and, but I was so thankful in the end that Mike was there because like John said, I, I was, I, little did I know, but that night I was gone and Mike stepped up, and he was he was there to lead, and he was there to help. Um, and then and then John, and again, just taking taking that leadership position because we we knew nothing um, about what God had planned, but God had had John there, God had Mike there, um, and Brianna there to uh, to help lead that night. Um, but it, then earlier in the week. Um, Amanda, who wasn't able to be here this morning, was one of the first leaders to get sick. And again, she's, she's a lot like Katerina, that like from day one to hitting the ground, she was tugging, she was talking, she was playing with the campers. Like she was, again, that leader that showed the rest of us how to connect and how to make friends. And, and it was amazing. But she got sick and then she, she tried to battle through it, but then her daughter got sick. So she had, took her daughter home. Um, and so, so Mark was... Mark had to go home with them so that they could get home and somebody, because somebody had to hold the bag while their daughter was throwing up. But then Mark got home, got like, what, three, four hours of sleep and was back the next morning to help our team keep going. Um, and then another conversation with tears. Um, Jamie ended up spending an entire night up with one of our students who was, who was sick all night long. And, and the next day, we had like three or four students that were sick that needed to go back. And, uh, and ta sitting down and talking to, to Jamie. And um, she, I mean, after everything, after losing a full night of sleep, like she, she wanted to stay, she wanted to serve, she wanted to, to be there for our team. And, uh, and at that point, to, to have to send her back. But to be so thankful um, that she was, she was the mom on the, the crew to, to be helping and to be serving and to be there for the girls as, as we really needed it that week. So thank you, Jamie. Um, but it was, it was amazing. All week long, um, almost every, every student, every member of our team that I would step in and, and, and say, you know what, you're sick. You, you, we, we needed to have you go home. Um, I'm sorry. But they were like fighting me they were crying they were doing everything that they could to stay and those who we did successfully get to go home as soon as they got better they were asking their parents like hey, can we go back when can we go back get us up there and uh and i was trying to, to figure out what was going on because it didn't didn't make sense it was it was crazy that they wanted to be there and uh toward the end of the week i started to realize all week the goal was like we were practicing that family that forget about me I love you and as we were doing that with each other with the campers we all got a taste of of love of not not some sort of silly like romantic love or, or like a Disney princess thing but like of oh we got to taste God's love that that sacrificial love where you you lay your life down and you pick up and you serve and you do and we, we became family. We got a taste of what it was like to be part of God's family. In a sense, we, we got that taste of heaven. And, uh, and it was amazing. And it's, it's not something you, you leave. Like you don't leave your family. Like you're there for each other. Even when you're the one puking your guts out, you stay and you help as much as you can with, with the others that are there. And, and it was such an amazing picture this week, being, being part of that team, serving together, and, and, and helping each other all, all along the way. So it was by far the hardest mission trip I have ever been on, but it, it was definitely the best one as well. I, I just want to throw something in too. I just want to thank Ross too for he's the one that put all the hard work in and planning all of this and doing everything. And at one point when we were down with so many people, Ross did every job. Amongst ever, like the other leaders, as Ross was in there, he was doing the kitchen.
doing the singing, then he was doing the skits, then he did the bathroom, then he went back and helped out with uh, the kitchen, and he still had to do the lessons because we lost all of our skit crew. So I, I just want to thank for all the time and effort that you put in and everything that you put in for the kids. Um, I, everybody's changed because of this trip. So just to say thank you. And I also want to thank all the kids because I don't normally work with these kids in youth group, and it was a privilege to work with you guys. You guys were awesome. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to get to know you better. Cool. Real quick, uh, Mark and Amanda, their daughter is nine. They actually took a week's vacation from their normal occupations to go serve a camp, which is huge just thinking through that. And I can tell you that the impact that it had on Maddie will be life-changing, them as well. Our goal is to impact these kids, starting with Jake. I mean, I love Jake. He's got an attitude. He, he walks around... <laughs> He walks around like this little tough kid, and the funny thing is, his mother has been saying for ages, there's something inside of there, there's something inside of there, and it came out. And all the way down through this list, Brad is this shy kid withdrawn, sometimes with an attitude, and Brad, first service, you said it was the most fun you ever had in your life. Didn't you say that? Who said that first service? I thought it was Brad. N novella. Most fun, novella. But they had an absolute blast. Why? Because they were pushed to steps outside of a comfort zone and the walls that they put up so that people didn't think they were vulnerable or whatever the case is. The challenge is a lot of them are withdrawing back into their walls because if they go home and say, yeah, I want to follow Jesus, you first, then it's like, okay, this has got to be part of my life. So our prayer is that this changes them forever. And the truth would happen this week is confirmation through opposition. God wants to do something in their lives, and Satan fought every single step of the way. And I can honestly say, I believe wholeheartedly, that these young people have an opportunity to see something different and to tap into an experience that can have power to change future decisions. Question on the table. If you had 140 bucks and you invested it, and the product was a kid who saw Jesus differently, then it's a well worthwhile investment. And what I want to encourage is you, next year, we have a week reserved already, and we are putting out applications. We want to impact the youth of this church. We want you to have fun. We're going to have some youth group fun opportunities. But life ain't about fun only. Life is about learning how to serve others and be fulfilled, and that's what we want for our young people. I'm going to ask our worship team to come forward, but while they're coming forward, would you give our leaders and our students just a great round of applause? Okay. Stand with us if you would. Young people, this is what I would like you to do. Go to the back of the sanctuary, leaders who are not singing, and then make a line on the grass outside so people can say hello to you. So go ahead and work your way to the back of the sanctuary. As you listen to the words of this song, what it boils down to is the words of this song became real in their hearts in the moment, and I believe that it's exactly what God wants to do for us as well. Sing along if you would. Use me here where I am. I'm not going to pray anymore. You'll change your plans Despite my fear I place my life in your hands The future can wait Tomorrow might be too late So Jesus, you Oh, yeah. 
that you're with us this morning. I uh, just want to make you aware of something. The Kelichow family, um, you guys got to put that up for me. This week, um, there was a death, Justin Kelichow, 38 years old, uh, wife Diane, and uh, two children. And um, Diane's sister is here this morning. Uh, the kids attend youth group. Justin was... Um, I love Justin. It was weird because Justin was deaf. His wife was deaf as well. But every time I saw Justin, we had this weird, I talk with my hands because I'm Italian, it makes no sense, but uh, for some reason we could communicate. Um, my heart was broken. We had the uh, opportunity to be there at the hospital as he passed. And uh, the obituary had said after a uh, brief illness, he had high blood pressure, but he, wasn't, he went to work that day, came home, sat in his recliner and um, heart failure. So this is what we're asking. We're asking if you can and if you would be part in helping finance some of the things that are before them. Um, keep them in prayer if you would. Um, when we walked back into the house uh, that evening after the hospital, um, had the opportunity to be with Diane as she walked in and Jaden's first words were, Mom, where's Dad? And uh, Jaden's 11 and uh, Raylene is, is 9. So what I'm asking is, use me here and not the financial part, would you pray for this family? I, I have to do the opportunity to do the funeral on Wednesday. And these are hard questions to answer. And somehow being able to say, God, we trust you. And that's even hard at times in the darkness of these type of situations. So what we're asking is if uh, you could pray for that family. If you'd like to take part, there's going to be a little plate at the back door on your way out and everything goes to them. It's going to be to offset their expenses. God, thanks. Thank you for what you did in the lives of these kids. I'm asking that um, the, the place in their heart that was touched by you, that was so real for each of them, would drive their lives. We live in a culture that isn't family, isn't, isn't forget about me, I love you. It's about me first. And I'm asking God, these, these kids would have a life lesson that changes them forever. And the kids below them in youth group, would look up to them. And these older kids would lead the younger kids and the kids in the congregation would desire, Father, to see what you have for them. Help us mourn with those who mourn in this community. Help us to be there. God, we do thank you for what you've done in each one of our lives. And I pray that when we walk out that door today, there will be elements of our thinking and of our heart and of our perspective that will be changed forever. We pray this in your name. Amen. God bless. Thank you for being here. Have a beautiful, sunny Sunday.